absolutely crawling with small trout. Some some better ones, this sort of size, and I've seen them following and chasing, but I just can't get them to, to hit properly. So I'll just try and get a little better, better look at this, this, this spot. So you've got this water. It's only a short stretch of this, this faster water. But you'll expect you can catch trout in there, you know it's fast because it, they'll just, just sit right in the bottom. When it, it flows through this gap, as I was spoken, speaking about earlier, that rock creating like a, a little back eddy there. That, my finger right, that bit there would be really slow underneath. So you'll get fish just sat there. So if you see anything like that, of trout back, sat back there, and often, um, if there's a big fish in the area, that's where it'll be. Simply because that's the prime spot for anything to come through when he's, he's biggest or she's biggest. And if you follow this flow through again, all this, all this is going to contain trout. But again, there's my finger pointing. There's another... I'll zoom in actually. You've got to look at the flow of the water. With, with the um, Polaroids on, I can see that there is another rock. And you can see the, the bubbles behind are not really moving. And that's created another back eddy. Places like that is where your trout will sit. So it's just looking for things like that. And also along that back wall. They're relatively safe out there. Steady flow and they can just watch for things coming down and when it comes down they'll just nip out and grab it. But even though there's a bit of flow in this... Zoom out again. Even though there's quite a bit of flow coming through there. Trout live in it, that's, what they, that's their uh, environment. And they'll just sit on the bottom. They'll just kind of suck it to the bottom and wait for anything to come through, so tag it all up. So I'm back on again with this little uh, floating bug um, and as you saw just before we're, we're at the top of this little pool uh, where the water's coming in so we're now facing downstream um, so you can fish this little bit differently uh, you can use you can use it and it's not just this low there's loads of floating cranks um, you can use this to, to fish under uh, you know, these overhanging trees, you struggle to cast into them sometimes. It gets worse than this in some places. And uh, it, it's difficult to cast, so you basically just flick it out in front of you and let it drift down. Let it drift downstream, keep your eye on it. Keep your, watch, keep your eye on your line so you don't get tangled up somewhere, but drift it downstream and when you're ready, don't drift it all the way down. Drift it down, you know, 15 foot and work it back, see if there's any trout in that spot. Next time, drift it down 20, 25 foot, work it back. Um, like I say, well, you've seen me fish this one. This swim, I've probably scared every fish, I've probably all had a go at it, but, but you'll, this will do, you, you won't be able to see the low, but you get to see what I'm doing. So flick it right in the fast water, keep your eye on it, and let it drift downstream. I've probably lost, I can't see what it is now. Let it drift downstream under a bush. And then switch it back, you can switch it back. You don't have to bring it all the way back in, you can bring it back up and then let it go back down again. You can, you can, uh, it helps you cover parts of the water you couldn't cover fish before. And also in a different way. And then, um, make sure you keep your eye on it, make sure you keep your eye on the little lower and also try and keep your line as tight as possible because it will sometimes take it as it's drifting down. Especially like that, it looks, it actually looks like a bug. So, um, you might just take it as it's going down. One last go this swim. You can see there very little movement like I was trying to explain earlier. That's a spot where something might lie up. I've covered it before but this time I've got a little salmo on. Salmo me. Make some great lows. One second, can't see myself. Salmo make some great lows. Salmo horn it. That's actually a small, quite a small one. I think it might only be three or four centimetres. It's only got one treble look on the back. But they have quite a quite a big, or some of them have quite a big um, diving vein. So they do help you get a little bit deeper. 
Again, you're going to watch out for flow in sinking, suspend inversions, uh, different sizes. Um, that <laughs> the trout zilla fish came on a, a salmo hornet, a, big, a bigger size than that, maybe it might have been a five centimetre with two treble hooks on it, but a, a bigger lure. But salmo again, if you're looking for lures, I mean, like I said, custom lures are great, but salmo, Polish company, I think been bought out by Fox, I might be right, um, been making lures for years, so great lures. But, like I say, it's got a bigger bigger lip on it, it's going to dig in more. You might bang the bottom, that might, might actually prove to be a um, winning formula. You're banging the bottom and you know, getting, their, getting their attention will come down and trout will come down and grab it. You might find that you're snagging up all the time, so you do lose lows when, you, when you're trout fishing, so get used to that. Worst cast ever. Great, um, great thing about um, the salmons with, or other lures with uh, the, the bigger diving vein, it's not deep, you might be banging bottom, but the good thing is it gets down there, a lot of these fish that were, the bigger fish, they were following but they were staying low, and they were flashing about left and right below the lure, they weren't coming up to the top, um, so that getting a lure like that down there, you might catch a fish that way, not, not me. Again, going back to going back to Polaroids, you're using you're using uh, the big lip flow that's getting down there and banging. So I can constantly feel that tip. You can feel the you know the, the knocking and it and it feels like it feels like a fish. It feels like this, the trout earlier, the small trout that were nipping at me at my low. Um, but I can see my low it, it in the bottom. I can't see any flashes behind it. Um, so it, it tells you what's happening down there. You, you, and fishing like this, uh, trout fishing is you know really important. So get yourself a, a pair of Polaroids. Um, you don't have to go crazy with these leech ones, as you know. We we get the leech glasses now, and you know they do a great range. But there's loads out there. Um, it makes a massive difference. I think on the on the first trout video, the the smacking trout video, there was a spot where uh, when we had a couple of pike, and and um, Sam didn't have it, actually have any polaroids on, and Eddie passed him the glasses, and then Sam could see the fish, cast to it, and caught it. Now he might have caught it by, by random by fan casting the, the swim, but he actually saw the fish and cast straight to it and got it straight away. And you know, <laughs> can't see how uh, important they are. The other, the other one as well, it's fishing in this sort of place, you know, you get tangled up, you're pulling, pulling your lure out of trees and things, and they come flying back at you. Safety for your eyes. So I'm going to try and catch some fish now. Um, and we'll have a look at lures as well. Remind me, I need to look at lures. So a quick look through through my lures. I probably forget names of some of them, but there's a bit of a selection of sizes. Um, first of all, got a few jigheads, really small jigheads, and some small, uh, I think they're two-inch relaxed copper toe shad, and I don't really use them to be honest. Uh, I do use them for perch fishing, but the better just in case, in case I go trout fishing and I find somewhere there's some perch for example or uh, in case I'm going to try the soft loader. I've got a few more soft loaders in me bag somewhere but I don't, I don't touch them. So you're seeing a couple of, use those first, the Strike King bits of minnow, a couple of those, a couple of really small copy of those, uh, I think they're one inch, I don't use them, again they're not for options. That's a really small um, uh, Ujka Ujka are actually on my shop, River Piker shop. Um, little beans, they come in a few sizes. That's a smallest one, B, it's called a B0. And uh, strangely, the next one up's a B1 and a B2 and a B3, for example. Um, they're Ujka Same again. These are, these are by Ujka as well, again. Some little cranks. Um, you'll see I've got opposites, bright colour and a natural, that's a trout colour. Um, trout colours are always good, Eddie loves his trout colours. Um, again, they're, they're on my shop. Uh, 
the actual neck size up of that is what the one that Ady, Ady caught. Um, there you catch. He caught one of his big trout on it anyway. Can't remember how big it was. Um, great lows for, for a sinking low. For a sinking low, they're not, they're not the best in flowing streams and things. You've got to get the to go, get the speed right. But uh, we use them quite, quite a lot um, for perch, trolling for perch. But they're great because they're a sinker. I get them sinking. So you can get in slightly deeper water as we were actually on that canal. It were a, a good good option. Decent sized lip on it. Um, what else have we got? If you remember those really old videos, that's from those first videos. These are ugly duckling lows. Little cranks, great. Perch pattern and a, a blue one. Again, um, I think these are slow sink as well. I think they might be slow sinking lows. I've not used them for ages, but they're there. They're great lows. I've caught loads of trout on them. You go through phases, don't you? Don't know what you like using. I'll probably never use that for trout, to be honest. It's just in there because it's small. Um, I think these are these are by it. I think these are M MC lows. A new one. I've been I've been trying catching a few fish on them, but it's, it's quite a fat body one. Um, I prefer these for chub chub and things. Trout seem to bang off them quite a lot. Or perch, great for perch. Trout seem to bang off them a lot. I found, but yeah, these are MC lows as well. I've been trying. Different versions. Again, trout colours. You can see, but. Thinner, thinner body, it's like an ugly duckling really, it's like a hot or a salmo hornet. It? It's a longer thinner body. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Eastern Europeans or you know like Serbian, big big fishing in Serbia, places like that. They like to use this profile though. Um, that's a low by HRT, I think it's called. Um, quite a deep dive in low. Funny little thing. You're gonna catch on that. My little spin mad. It's quite a good option. It's um to say it's a tiny say it's a put it in camera it'll help Paul. To say it's a tiny low. Um it's four gram. You can cast it quite far. So that's a good option to try and get into some uh, it's also gonna got a double hook on it, so it's sometimes you don't always hook up, but at least you don't you don't hook the bottom. Um You've seen the jointed um, yogis before. When I actually got two left, that's my last two. Try not to cast them into any trees. Uh, another Ujka. That's a, obviously larger than the first one you saw. Bigger version. Again, great for perch. Yeah, it might be a B1 or something, that one. But again, fat bodied, so I, I, I tend to don't use them as much for trout. Trout bounce off them. Apart from the big trout. Big trout will nail them, but a smaller trout don't. Um, but great for chub. One spinner, rusty old blue fox. It's probably not been used for years, but it's in there in case you ever need it. Probably wants a bit of a polish. But Meps, blue fox, super vibrax, whatever you want, it'll work. Salmo, as I mentioned before, in my thing. Salmo hornets. Got, you got two there, slightly bigger. Again, great for perch, great for perch, but trout fishing, most local shops will sell them. Sorry, most local tackle shops will sell them. Decent ones. Anyway. If you've got a low selection, you'll know, love these, because, like I said, Fox have got them. But Salmo on it. Get, get, a, get, a, get a bunch of them. There's different Salmos. I've got, um, must be a other box. I've got some more Salmos. In fact, in fact, this is a Salmo as well. In the little bug section, that's a Salmo. Oh, what's it called? Tiny Free, it's called, it says on the side. That's a little fr floating bug. Great, great for summer um, chub fishing, that sort of thing. It's a floater. Along with the other bugs that you've seen there, these are hand handmade bugs. I can't remember who makes these ones, to be honest. Um, look at that grub. It's gonna catch my chub. Uh, and a little surface popper. You'll find trout will take surface lows, especially the bigger ones, aggressive ones, um, and chub obviously, perch. So I've got enough selection there. Um, it doesn't really matter too much about which ones you get, but what I would say is, well, you said it in the video, make sure you've got a selection of floating, sinking, 
suspending and that way you can cover most things different size lips on them so some will be big diving lips some will be smaller diving lips um, and that's what you need you can get jointed if you want and unjointed lows uh, long thin body lows whatever you know just you'll find your own that you like now trout fishing lads obviously the fly anglers uh, and quite a lot of the low low fishing uh, trout anglers they like to use waders it's big big advantage uh, i don't tend to can make it difficult especially uh, what we're in now june everything's starting to grow so bank sides are not easy but if you can get a set of waders uh, get in the water and it's once you're in the water it's not deep um, you can navigate your way up, uh, upstream or downstream a lot easier um, a lot of lads tend to work up the way upstream and you're not disturbing the fish um, like I said, but when you when you bank anglers if you haven't got waders it can be difficult so again you're here on fishing a spot it's not really easy but we'll have a go at it but again we've got a little fast water actually running on the inside next to me just opens up a little bit so it looks like it's worth a go so cast through these uh, Again, keeping your, keeping your eyes out. I can I can see I can see some uh, small fish. They're rising up like the edge of the of, a, of the fast water. But um, like I said, they're probably of a similar size to the one that I caught before. So not really not really what I'm aiming for. For a simple reason that if you catch them, if you catch the really small ones. It can be difficult to hook up so if you've got trebles that's why some lads switch to the um, that's why some lads switch to single hooks. You get the smaller fish, it's a mouthful of hooks. Catch the you catch the larger ones it's not so much an issue. fish. As you saw, you've seen me a little uh, go light when you're trout fishing to be honest. I mean I've got one of these kind of front bum bag, front bum, fanny bag. Got a fanny pack. Um, it's a dragon worm I got from UK Lowe's. Um, I've taken more stuff out of it. But you could even go lighter than this, it doesn't really weigh much so. But, Small pair of forceps so just clicked on. We're not going to go anywhere once they're locked in place. And, it, and as soon as you catch a fish, you can just you just grab them straight away. So don't have it in your bag. Have them hooked on you. Have them hooked on your jumper. Anywhere. So much quicker. Try and catch another. 